All right, and then this new assignment for computer art. We are going to be doing uh, a series of drawings in Photoshop uh, that will represent the principles of design. And so I'd like you to choose six of the seven principles of design uh, as I scroll through uh, our assignment here. Make sure you read the examples and take a look at some of the definitions and maybe even get into um, going on and researching a little bit online about the different principles of design and what they, uh, what they really mean. Um, so, you have some examples here. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started and just demonstrate a few things. Main tools we want to use here are brush, shape, and paint bucket tools, as well as gradients is something we're going to go over. Um, so, going over to Photoshop, uh, we want to be starting this document at a size a little bit different than we have been working recently. We're going to go with inches here, we'll go six by six to make these all square. We're going to compile them into one document at the end. We're going to go with 300 here so we have a nice high resolution um, for these kind of finished images. Um, I'll close that first one. So, uh, a couple things to go over. Uh, you have your gradient tool is one that we uh, are going to be using. There's also a paint bucket tool there so it could be one of the uh, either or um, that you'll be selecting here and what you can see is that you have a menu here that gives you some colors to choose from. Um, there are some presets in here. Um, if you ask me most of these are pretty tacky so what we might do is make our own gradient. Uh, if you double click on this uh, spot or actually uh, it will just bring you to your color window over here you can select which color you would like to be um, that color at the end there. It looks like I have selected actually this transparent. Whenever you see that gray block, that means that it's transparent in the background actually. Um, so I'm going to go to this first um, gradient type. We have, um, right, so we have our first color here. You have to make sure you've clicked on that first top part and you can actually click and slide and drag uh, this color around. Oh, actually, no, you know what? This, that was left over from the preset before. So that actually is controlled on the bottom side. Correction, that's what I thought. Um, so going in here, you do have that option to pick your color from uh, that window. So we'll just you know take something, something a little darker and have it fade to something a little lighter. Again, you can pick your color from the sidebar over here. Maybe it's a little, you got a blue to a blue kind of gradient going. Um, and then if we click and drag and hold and then let go, you'll get a gradient that goes across your screen. Um, you can also do this inside a selection area. So say if you uh, draw a shape with your selection marquee tool and then uh, use your gradient tool to fill that, you can fill it inside of an area and we can almost create a painting kind of just layering up uh, different gradients if we just kind of keep going and going and layering these one over the other. Um, you can create an interesting composition um, just kind of going ahead and filling in a bunch of gradients. Um, so I, if I wanted to create um, maybe one of the principles for instance uh, could be balance. Maybe I would just keep going around making selections and making sure that they're kind of evenly spaced using the, about the same type of sh uh, size objects. Um, this also kind of represents unity, I think, pretty well because the colors are all very similar. Um, so that covers pretty much the gradient tool. Again, like I said, you can draw lasso shapes as well um, if you want to kind of experiment with drawing some lasso shapes and then filling those with gradients as well. That is something else that uh, you can do. Um, and then, of course, we can kind of move and take these uh, shapes around and and do things with them too. Oh, well actually no we cannot really because what I'm just noticing too I'm gonna undo oh, so that's, I need to go to step backwards um, is that I've been drawing these all in the same layer so what you'd want to make sure you're doing is is obviously you'd want to be doing those shapes on new layers um, in order to really move them around and do much with them. Maybe I'll add one more kind of triangular shape here uh, just to kind of balance or add one more triangular shape. Okay, so going on ahead, um, other tools that can be used for these assignments, uh, obviously your brush tool may come in handy. Um, 
other things going down the list um, that we may want to use are also in the uh, custom shape tool. So custom shape tool has a lot of shapes in the library uh, that Photoshop can give you. Um, if you're not seeing many here, what you need to do is click on this gearbox and then click on all so that you get all the different menus in there. And then you'll say okay to replace those. And I've got all these shapes. Um, so things that may be useful in here are if you're trying to uh, go at the uh, pattern maybe, if you're trying to create a a pattern for um, the principle of design called pattern. Maybe you want to make some of these shapes um, that go in a pattern. Um, so a pattern, you know, is a repeating design that's going to kind of go across uh, your space. And so um, if you draw these shapes and want to change their color, I believe that you can change their color pretty easily. Um, let's see, so will it let me make that, that color? No, I believe we can. How can we do this? Paint buckets, right? So our paint bucket hides behind the gradient tool, so we were just using that. So we'll have to look at, oh right, okay, so what's, these shapes are always going to be drawn as smart objects. So actually you can't really change their color once they have been established, unless we rasterize them. So what we'll have to do is go to layer, rasterize this shape and now I can take this shape and I should be able to fill bucket on that shape and make it any color I want. So see if I just click anywhere there it fills my entire background but um, if you take any of these smart object shapes and you go to um, layer and rasterize and sh rasterize that shape now I can make that shape uh, any color I want. So it's not no longer a smart object. So um, I wonder if we can select both of those layers and do it to both. Nope, it won't. It won't let me do that. Um, but I could do rasterize all layers and actually that will that will kind of jump to what I wanted it to do. Um, so just to make sure I click on one of these layers and then I can change the shape, colors of those other shapes. Um, now maybe if I was going to show something like movement, uh, other custom shapes that we can take are uh, ones that might help us show movement and some of those that I was thinking of are kind of these spirals um, some of the splatter shapes um, that we can draw might be able to show movement in a way um, your fill uh, color is here as well um, so you can see you can change that before really getting into uh, drawing a shape and also you have a stroke line here so if you have the strike through that's no stroke line that's good, that's what you should be using, but you can add an outline to your shapes too um, if that's something you want to do. Um, so if again, if I'm showing movement, maybe I use things like these arrows to kind of show movement, um, you know, and kind of repeat arrows going throughout my picture. Maybe I'll take some and kind of, you know, rotate them, um, press enter to apply that transformation. You know, maybe I'll take a couple here um, and this is kind of creating a sense of movement, kind of moving your eye across, around, um, and also kind of creating a pattern too. So it could be another example of that. So last thing before um, we really uh, say we're done with this is you want to add some text to name um, what design this is actually for. And so um, maybe this one, I think, if I was to call it quits now, might be the best uh, example of pattern. Um, it could be a couple, but I think that it best represents patterns. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select that text and then go ahead and bump up the size. Maybe 48 um, seems good. Something not too intrusive to the, uh, to the design, but that uh, kind of gets the point across because it's pretty uh, large. And maybe I could shrink that just a little bit so that it fits into the corner there. Um, and apply that transformation. So I didn't want it to come too close to the edges, um, just close enough so it's pretty much out of the way, but it labels uh, my text here, or my image here. And so actually if you want to change your fonts, let me see, I think I have to take my text tool and yeah, click in the middle of that with your text tool selected. Um, so if you want to change fonts, you have lots of fonts to choose from here as well. 
Um, so any of those fonts that you want to go with in that menu, um, feel free to, uh, to choose whatever seems right for the design that you're working on. All right, and that's it for this uh, particular tutorial.